So we're here with Eli from Mystic Circuits at Hello. Superbooth 2023. Nice to see y'all. Uh, I'm here showing off a couple of new modules as well as our lovely video modular, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, the most exciting recent developments are that we've recently released our first VCA called 3D VCA. It's a quad VCA in 6HP, which already makes it a little bit smaller than other quad VCAs that are out there. And uh, we do this with some a little bit of clever design. Basically, instead of giving you individual CV control over each uh, VCA, what we do instead is we give you macro controls that treat all of the VCAs as a group. So Z will do the overall level, X will do the left and right pairs of VCAs and why we'll do the top and bottom pairs of VCAs. And the nice thing about this is that you can have all four on, turn that down a tiny bit, you can have any pair of adjacent VCAs on, or you can have just a single VCA on and isolate that individual unit. Now, why this is useful um, is in conjunction with how the macros work and how the normalization works, it's sort of set up to nicely give you a couple of different options. You can send one thing to four places. You can mix four different signals down to one destination. You can take two stereo signals, crossfade between them, balance the left and right channels, and do the overall volume. Obviously, that's all with voltage control. It works in mono, stereo, and quad, and uh, it has these handy sum inputs. You can't really see them because of the cable for us, but what they do is they allow you to automatically mix an external signal into each of the four outputs. And so what we're doing here is, for example, we're taking the two outputs from this second 3D VCA, which has this little pad thing going on, a little polyphonic sort of sequence. I have no idea if those are in tune right now or not, so maybe I'll just take this out. Um, so now you can see we have a little thing going where we're modulating X and Y, and that's kind of like picking out different notes of our multiple uh, note oscillator. The outputs from this are actually going into the sum inputs here. And so we have a stereo mix from this 3D VCA going into the sum inputs of this 3D VCA out through to the output. And then we also cool. have our drum module, which also has stereo outs, but has its own little stereo mixer built in with its outputs going into the sum inputs on this 3D VCA, which is then being sent all the way out to this 3D VCA's output. So this lets you do an entire stereo, mono, quad mix, all using just 3D VCAs. It lets it easily integrate with other stereo or quad mixers you might already have in your system. And it allows you to really easily mix a whole lot of things together. You can have up to eight things going through a single 3D VCA, and then you get voltage control over four of those things. So Excellent. that's currently in pre-order. You can go to our website and pre-order them, and we'll be shipping in June. And what's the website? Uh, Mysticcircuits.com. OK, great. Thank you for asking. Um, so if I was to show a little bit of something else, uh, we have a new version of Anna coming out. This is Anna version two. Anna is an older module of ours. Uh, it's an analog logic module, which takes two uh, analog inputs and gives you basically nine different sort of cross modulation options for them. Um, so for example, like a ring modulator would be an example of an analog logic module. The cool thing about analog logic versus digital logic is if you patch in gates, It'll give you the normal gate outputs that you would expect from a digital logic module. But if you patch in fluctuating voltages, it gives you fluctuating voltages out, right? Awesome. So Anna has these two inputs. You get an, either an attenuverter over each input. There's a, now a level indicator for both of those. You can patch into there. And now this knob becomes an offset. So you're able to see it's a little bit more negative. Now it's a little bit more positive. One of the new features we added is a multiplier. So you're actually able to do a through zero multiplication of the both of those. So you're basically automating the function of this knob. And then that lets you do all kinds of other fancy stuff. We've added three new outputs. I apologize to people who weren't already familiar with Anna, but now you basically have the minimum and maximum, which is pretty standard for analog logic modules. There's also a mix, which means you can use this as a 10 vert offset. There's the analog XOR, which behaves kind of like a through zero VCA, but it uses clamping instead of uh, attenuation. There's this new cut output, kind of hard to explain. It's a very bizarre nonlinear wave shaper. 
The Good magnitude idea. output gives you the difference of the two. That's nice because it always gives you a positive voltage. We've enhanced the step output, which is a track and hold, similar to the Woggle Bug pseudo random sort of generators. And that will sample both of your inputs. And it uses the, the actual signals going through to also generate the clocking behavior. The clocks are coming out of the box output, which gives you a three level square wave with positive, zero, and negative, which means that you can pulse width modulate the positive and negative sections of your signal separately. And then there's also this uh, swap output, which is basically just a switch, which switches on or off the different inputs, right? Great, and now, wow, this is so cool. many features. It's got a lot going on. And the nice thing about it is that I have this second 3D, or the second Anna down here, which is doing our control voltage duties, right? So I have it hooked up. So if I change stuff on this one, all nine outputs are going to different areas. I currently have nothing going into it, right? And so I'm able to control this entire patch just with these two macro controls. It's hard for me to hear what kind of difference it's making, but you know, hopefully it's doing something that your users can hear. It's doing something. A nice thing about it too is that I can then just, I have this little button down here, I turn it on. Now we have LFOs going into it. Oh, cool. Now it's doing all kinds of stuff, right? So as you can see, Anna does the audio. It can do control voltages, it can do gates, it can do note sequences. The coolest part about it though is that when you combine all those things, your outputs are all a kind of different combination of all of those different signals. You get all these weird kind of in-between states that are difficult to get with other analog logic or just normal logic modules. Um, Brilliant. I apologize. I feel like I can just sort of like ramble about all of this Fine, sort of man, stuff no. and it's just like, yeah, you are get me going, <laughs> I get excited and I keep talking. Yeah, no, it's great, man. Are they all available now? Anna is currently not available now. In fact, I'm currently in a bit of a situation where most of my stuff is not available. That's because I am currently redesigning my entire modular line to basically require very little soldering on my end. And my hope is that after that happens, most of my modules are going to be available in perpetuity. So that's going to make it so that basically, you know, last year I released IDUM. IDUM is a uh, gate processor that lets anyone of any intelligence make intelligent dance music. Nice. And uh, the thing about it is that it was so successful that I spent most of the last year soldering them together. <laughs> and that's a very good problem to have. And also at a certain point I realized that if I'm ever gonna make another module or even possibly redesign items so that it needs to, so that it's easier for me to develop and to, uh, to build and get out there in time, uh, I'm gonna need to take a pause from building them. So, um, so I'm currently in the process of redesigning IDUM in order to get them out there as quickly as possible. And the best part of that is that once I get them out there, it, instead of being able to make 10 or 20 a week, I'm going to be able to make 50 to 100 a week, hypothetically. So Fantastic. it's going to be a really big change. Um, like you say, it's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have. I'm extremely grateful for all the support that we've gotten over the last year or so. But also, I needed to take enough of a pause in order to just be able to do anything else. So 3D VCA is the first module we're doing that uses all of these uh, new manufacturing techniques in order to make it as easy and quick to build as possible. I'm hoping to have our entire line back in stock by the end of the summer. Excellent. Um, yeah. And you also have some visual modules. We also have some visual modules. Yeah. Some folks have been uh, wondering if we're still doing this. We've had them out in the wild for a long time. I think we first announced this right before the pandemic hit. I don't know how many of you are aware that parts have been incredibly hard to find over the course of the pandemic. And the thing about video, it runs at a much faster speed. It's much more sensitive to noise. And so you need to use higher quality parts. Um, we do our best with uh, this module. It's a quad video oscillator called Ruins. And the entire idea behind Ruins that it was hypothetically going to be the kind of video module that you could still make during the apocalypse. Um, the apocalypse, as far as parts are concerned, came. Turned out it wasn't the case. But instead of sacrificing the quality and going with cheaper parts, we decided to do some redesigns and also to wait for certain parts to come back in stock. And hey, guess what? Those parts are coming back in stock. So Great. I'm hoping to have this out by the end of the summer as well. Um, Amazing. Ruins is cool because it uses discrete circuits and uh, like CMOS transistor-based circuits in order to make everything happen in the most affordable possible way while giving you compelling results, right? So Ruins is not, as you can see up here, there's a lot of noise in our signal. There's all these weird, wiggly, jittery lines. Ruins is not going to give you the clean kind of test equipment look that you're going to get from an LCX module. But I still think it does some pretty compelling stuff. Yeah, um, it looks great. I the think. oscillators are all 
doing these weird bendy things. The funny thing about it is that even when the oscillators aren't patched together, they affect each other. The attenuverters <laughs> are all discrete, discrete transistor based, which means that they do not actually completely turn off. And the FM will also clip your output. Mm. All right, so now we have FM going in in a diamond. And as you can see, it bends the lines into a diamond, but it also cuts them off at a certain point. Right, cool. that's not your normal, typical behavior from a uh, video oscillator. It also can go in the other direction, and it usually does a little cutout right there in the middle, right? So you can see the FM is really funky and weird. It's not quite as clean and gorgeous as, uh, as the uh, LZX oscillators, but I quite like how it looks. Yeah, um, we also choice. have this flip input, which will take your input oscillator and it runs it into an XOR gate in the feedback loop, which gives you all these weird checkerboard shapes, right? Nice thing about that is that it can give you a combination of vertical and horizontal lines, which can sort of be difficult to achieve in video space. There's also this uh, circle input, which actually breaks the feedback loop of the uh, oscillator, and that lets you treat each channel as a filter as well. So if you look at what we've got here, we have this diamond, which is going in. You can smooth it out, give it some nice edges, you can also run it into the square output, and it will treat it like a sort of a gate delay sort of thing. So now you can see our, our shape is being moved to the right. Um, you can hypothetically voltage control this. Let's see if I could get this to work here. All right, there's like a little bit of the voltage control going on. Yeah. The horizontal lines. Video is a whole other beast, my <laughs> friends. But no, I think that gives you kind of an idea of what what we're working on. Um, yeah. And of course, like a nice thing about this too is that with each ruins, you get four of these channels, right? So with LZX, a certain issue that you might come across is that they have these really gorgeous, high-quality VCOs. And in order to get interesting things going on in video land, sometimes you need a lot of these VCOs, right? And in, maybe if you have this really nice, gorgeous VCO with all these options it built in, you don't want to use one as an LFO or to make horizontal lines or something boring like that. You want to use it for what it's best for. And so I kind of designed Ruins with the idea that it can make interesting stuff on its own. Or if you have other video gear, such as the Prismatic Ray from LZX or something like that, it's a really nice modulation source for that other video gear, which you might already have in your system. Brilliant. Yeah, I love the look. I think Thank the you. look's great, man. Um, are these, is Ruins, wh when's Ruins going to be available? My, my goal is, is to have be? Ruins available at the end of the summer. I'm shooting for around $500. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for showing us your gear. Thank really you very cool. much. Really love it.